Hello, everyone. Uh, we'll be starting in just a few minutes. We'll still have people joining, so we'll uh, wait a couple minutes to let everybody get online. Okay, good morning everyone and welcome. We are so excited to have you here. Uh, my name is Jessica Johnson and I'm the Regional Director of the Kansas Small Business Development Center at Johnson County Community College. The advisors here have been digging hard into the CARES Act and the SBA regulations since they were released. And I think they're starting to have dreams about it. Uh, they've been looking at it so much. But today we hope to bring a new perspective um, to the PPP um, that's the Paycheck Protection Program and the EIDL grant, um, along with options of how to maximize the loan forgiveness uh, portion of these programs. Before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Kansas Small Business Development Center as we are a resource partner of the Small Business Administration. Next slide. Uh, we are a grant funded program um, with a cooperative agreement through uh, with the Small Business Administration and additional funding uh, through the Kansas Department of Commerce and Johnson County Community College. Our mission is to increase economic prosperity in Kansas by helping entrepreneurs and small businesses start and grow through professional counseling, training and resources um, across eight regional centers in Kansas. The Johnson County Community College Center serves Johnson, Wyandotte, and Miami County uh, small businesses. Our individual advising services are provided at no charge. We like to say they are prepaid with your tax dollars. And at Johnson County Community College, we have three full-time advisors who work one-on-one -on -one, uh, with business owners to provide confidential and comprehensive advising services, such as uh, uh, developing cash flow projections, exploring financing options, and developing a sales strategy and marketing plan. Training is also a cornerstone of our program. Um, we have a multitude of workshops and seminars at no or low cost to small businesses with topics ranging from QuickBooks to financial, sales and withholding taxes, marketing and social media, among many others. A full listing of all of our offerings can be found through the Johnson County Community College uh, continuing education website at the link you see there. Uh, next slide. So if you're a current client, please uh, do not hesitate to reach out to your advisor during these times. Um, or if you're seeking assistance, you can register um, with the Kansas Small Business Development Center office near you at the website you see there. Next slide. Your speakers today come from the Kansas Small Business Development Center at Johnson County Community College. Together we bring 26 years of small business advising experience, each of us stemming from differing backgrounds. My background is in government procurement, reading, understanding, and interpreting federal and local regulations to assist small business owners. I am a certified contract management professional working with businesses to leverage government procurement opportunities. Mr. John Odessi, the most tenured advisor at Johnson County Community College, harnesses his extensive management and sales experience in the public and private sectors to assist small business clients. John is a certified global business professional working with businesses in exporting their products and services. Stephanie Willis uses her corporate and small business ownership expertise as a seasoned sales, marketing, and management leader to assist small business owners. Stephanie is a certified value growth advisor, helping growing businesses increase value, especially in preparation for business transition or sales. Last but not least, Mr. Jack Harwell. He leverages over 30 years of manufacturing, distribution, logistics, and all things supply chain to assist our clients. Jack is a certified exit planning advisor, working with businesses in developing a strategic exit plan. Next slide. So today we're gonna briefly cover sections um, 1102 and 1110 of the CARES Act, which deal with the Paycheck Protection Program and the Emergency IDLE Grant respect, respectively. Um, and to illustrate these programs and how they can be utilized with various business scenarios, we developed three different scenarios that we're gonna walk you through on how to um, maximize um, the use of these programs. 
the figures that we use in these scenarios are best estimated based on the guidance um, from the CARES Act and the SBA. And then we'll wrap up with a Q&A session. Next slide. So we are recording this session and um, the recording will be made available after, um, after the presentation is over within 24 to 48 hours. Um, we will have a Q&A session during this uh, program. There is at the bottom of your screen, you're gonna see two, um, you should see a Q&A box um, and possibly a chat box. Please place all of your questions in the Q&A box type in the question, and then if you do see a question in there that uh, you would like to ask that's already been asked, vote um, on that question, because we're gonna answer questions that um, are the most popular, so the ones that have the most thumbs up, and to vote, you just click on the thumbs up sign. Um, and questions we do not answer during the live session um, will be answered and provided in a Q&A transcript. We're gonna try to get through as many um, as possible as time allows, but do know that, that uh, the transcript will be provided along with the recording. Next slide. So this presentation is a high level summary of the recent legislation and how you can utilize it, but we do advise you to consult a qualified professional to get a comprehensive understanding of how this legislation among others will impact your business in the present and over the next few years before making um, business decisions. Um, you can contact your advisor, your attorney, your accountant, um, anybody who can help you make those business decisions. And without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, Mr. Jack Harwell. Hello, everybody. Uh, as you probably know by now, the CARES Act was signed into law on March 27th of this year. Uh, there's actually three sections uh, called Title I, which is Keeping America, American Workers Paid and Employed Act. Title II is Assistance for American Workers, Families, and Businesses. And the third title supports the healthcare system in fighting the coronavirus. Uh, this is the same law that is providing the $1,200 check that most of you heard about that is coming to most taxpayers. Uh, two sections under Title I are what we are gonna focus on today. The idle emergency grant is a section in the CARES Act that allows for a first line of relief for small businesses impacted by the COVID-19. Uh, there's good terms for the uh, loan, uh, so maybe not your best option, but since they've passed the CARES Act, uh, that has changed because they allowed for up to $10,000 of what they call an idle emergency grant available to most small businesses. So when you apply for the idle grant, you can select a box that says that you want advanced uh, payment and that will generate the request for the idle grant. Uh, the grant is available for businesses under 500 employees, sole proprietors and independent contractors. You have to be in operation on January 31st of 2020 and the law requires that the checks are provided within three days. Uh, what we're hearing is though, is those checks are not coming out yet, or those payments are not coming out yet. Um, so that three days obviously uh, is not um, happening at this point, but that's the uh, demand from the law. Uh, good news, you don't have to repay the grant. So any money you get, from the idle emergency grant, you do not have to repay it. Another section of the CARES Act is called the Paycheck Protection Program. And it's designed to keep America's workers paid and employed. It's an SBA loan program. So you'd be going to a bank to get this loan. Uh, they've relaxed qualifications. Uh, they've included sole proprietors, independent contractors, self-employed individuals, LLCs, corporations, and franchise. All of those are included in the eligibility for the, uh, I, the Paycheck Protection Program loan. Terms are favorable, it's 1%, uh, it's two-year loan. Uh, the way they calculate 
the amount of the loan is 2.5 times your monthly payroll costs over the last 12 months. And six months of payments will be deferred into the future. And there is forgiveness available to offset your payroll and other costs. Uh, so you have a potential of some or all of this loan being forgiven and not have to pay it back. It encourages you keeping and rehiring your employees and also supports rent, utilities, and interest expenses. So with those two uh, sections of the law in consideration, we've, we're recommending a two-step cash strategy for our clients and other business owners. Step one, apply for the EIDL and request the emergency EIDL grant. There's no cost to apply. They require very little information, only you know, the contact information about the business and then the revenue and cogs. You don't have to take the money, or even if you aren't approved, you will still be eligible for the cash grant up to $10,000. The SBA will determine the amount that they will send you. Uh, we see that as fast cash that you will not have to repay. And then step two of our strategy would be to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. You get favorable terms. As I mentioned before, much can be forgiven. You have six months to start payments, and it could be a cash supplement to your business. So we've developed three scenarios of businesses that we've talked to and input we've gotten from the uh, information and developed these scenarios to illustrate how you might interpret the uh, two sections of the law and Stephanie will go over the gig worker, independent contractor, or self-employed. I'll talk about a growing business before the COVID-19 hit, and John will follow up with a business with over a 50% drop in revenue. So I'll turn it over to Stephanie at this time. Okay, good morning. Um, as Jack said, I'm going to talk a little bit about the independent contractor or self-employed or gig worker, whether you're um, an Uber driver, or in this case, we have a hairstylist, um, somebody who's working for themselves and so in this scenario um, Susan is the hairstylist and she's a single mom of three her credit score is 600 um, her sales at the for last year 2019 meaning how much she charged for all of her services and product were 69,000 um, because of the way she does her P&L profit and loss statement her gross profits were also 69,000 her supplies and miscellaneous um, utensils and stuff were down below the, as fixed expenses, um, down below the line. But her net income after paying for her, paying herself and paying for all of her um, expenses to do business was $39,000. Um, she did recently um, buy, a loan, buy a new chair and so she had an out $14,000 outstanding loan and her payments for that loan are $240 a month and she pays for her space in the salon that she rents space in is $300 a week. So this gives you an overview of this person's scenario and all the different numbers that the SBA and the um, treasury, the government are using to calculate these various opportunities. So next slide. So what are her options? So let's talk about those. Um, you know, as Jack mentioned, part of the CARES Act is to um, include gig workers in unemployment where they have never been included before. Um, the state value is um, four and something percent of your um, revenue. And so typically between 250 and $400 in the state of Kansas. And then the CARES Act said that they would be adding another $600. Um, she was, however, went into the Kansas Department of Labor site and applied and was denied. Um, upon further communication with the um, department, they said that they were still waiting for federal direction and because at this point they showed that she did not meet the criteria because she had not paid into the unemployment um, area that, that they were waiting for that direction and how they were going to get their money before they could approve any disbursement of it. Um, so her communication was just to wait for that, check back, and then possibly appeal the um, unemployment application. Her other option is the payroll protection program. 
um, and that is um, calculated based on the net income of a sole um, solopreneur or um, gig worker or um, self-employed. So looking, thinking back to those, that first slide and the numbers, her net income was $39,000. So to get your average compensation per month, take that divided by 12. So that's 3,250 is the average um, compensation that they will be using as the baseline. Um, as Jack explained, it's two and a half times is the um, loan approval estimate. So um, they are looking to um, give her 8,000, potential of $8,125. Um, I don't see my grant. Um, um, another thing, something's got moved around. Another thing that she would be eligible for is that stimulus and down below, um, it shows um, the various ranges that the government is using. And so because she's a single mother head of household, she has the $1,200. And then because she has three children, she would be um, app available to get or should be deposited into her bank account another $1,500, so a total of $2,700. Um, the idol, I don't know, is that on the next one, Jack? Maybe go to the next one. Okay, yeah. So additional considerations were um, the IDLE loan, which um, she filed and requested the grant. Um, and the SBA did show up. I mean, she checks her credit regularly, and she did see that the SBA had checked her, pulled her credit. And based on the numbers we've heard, which are supposed to be if your credit's in excess of 500 or something like that, um, she meets the approval. Um, so based on... Um, that calculation, they're taking gross profit, so that's her total revenue, minus her cost of goods, which there were no cost of goods, so that's the 69,000 number from the previous, the first slide, and they're dividing that in half. So her loan approval estimate would be $34,500. Um, at this point, we do not know how they are calculating the grant of value. We know it's up to $10,000, but we, again, we have no idea how they're coming up with those numbers. So we just estimated a 6,000 for the purposes of this scenario to um, be able to you know, demonstrate how all the numbers work together. Um, as per the previous slide, the Paycheck Protection Program, um, we talked about the fact that she would get $8,000. Um, the thing that we're trying to point out here is that um, because the idle loan and the paycheck protection program are part of the stimulus to keep people working, they will, they're not going to be, quote, double dipped, if you will. So you can't get the 6000 plus the whole 8000 because it's all supposed, tied together. So if your $8,000 estimate loan approval value and you have the $6,000 grant given to you, then that would net the forgiven amount during that eight-week period to be $2,125, but in essence, you're getting 100% of the cost of your payroll for that eight week period covered. Um, and then um, the other program is the SBA debt relief program. And as mentioned, she had purchased a new chair. And so that is a 7 a loan with her bank, an SBA loan, and her payments are $240 per month. And per the program, um, they're going to pay for six months. And um, basically, you just said she will be talking with her bank and her bank will be processing and working with her on getting that relief. So, um, next slide. So, you know, what, what, what should she do? What, she has all these options out there and what really does she, what, what, what does she really need to do? So, her funding options, as we talked through those past slides are, she's got that relief check that should be deposited, $2,700. Um, we estimated her grant of, um, would be at $6,000. The net of the payroll protection program because of that grant would be an additional $2,125. And then because of her loan um, relief program, she would get another $1,440. So we put in quotes here, total free money is $12,265. Now she has to, um, we've been told to help talk with people about estimating their working capital for six months. And so that's what we've used here is the baseline. Um, using that $3,125 that she um, takes, that she is the baseline for her compensation based on that $39,000 net income, 
um, six months, she would need $19,500 to quote live on. Um, her rent was $300 a week, so that'd be another $7,200 that she still has to pay regardless of working or inability to work. Um, her loan payments would be covered during those six months, so that's $1,440. So she needs $28,000, $128,140 to get her through the next six months. And the funding that's currently available under the free money is $12,265. So there's a $15,875 difference between what she needs and what's being given to her as part of these various relief programs. Um, the, so then she would need to fall back on that idle loan. And if you recall, we had an estimated value based on her gross profit at $34,500. So the recommendation that we would walk, walk her through is you don't need to take the whole $34,500 and have yourself in some in long-term debt. Um, because that is a big consideration for all businesses is, um, you know, this is a long-term liability and what can you continue to handle throughout the life of your business. So we would recommend that she only to accept 15, that $15,875 from the IDA loan to minimize her long-term exposure and take advantage of all the free funding. So that's the, that's the solopreneur scenario. Um, and I think, John, you're up next. Actually, uh, that's, that's mine. Uh, so we have a small manufacturer. This is the second scenario. Uh, they're an LLC filing as a sole proprietorship. Their revenues in 2019 are 175,000. They've grown to 250,000 this year. At least that was the projection in the first couple of months of the year, they were on path for that. Uh, the cost of goods for last year was $63,000. So they were just getting traction prior to the COVID-19 outbreak. They have a large debt load, $5,500 a month for the equipment they bought to build this business. And they have one full-time and two part-time workers. And they have a sales representative that's a 1099 contractor at a 6% commission. So the first thing that we did was look at uh, targeting April 10th is when we would get a loan for the PPP. So we're gonna go through the PPP calculations and it's based on when you think you will get that loan and we've targeted the 10th of April. We looked at the last 12 months of payroll and uh, as you can see, it includes the three workers, uh, one full-time and two part-time. It also includes the net earnings of the business because this is a sole proprietorship as far as tax returns go, they don't have any salary in their P&L. Their salary is the net earnings of the business. Uh, so if you're a pass-through entity, add your uh, net earnings into the calculations. Uh, she did have one employee that was over $100,000 in salary. So we capped them at 100. So we had to subtract 20,000 from the numbers and we end up with a payroll cost of 157,871, and that's for a year. So with the COVID calculator that we've developed, and I'll show you that in a minute, uh, we've modeled how the protection, Paycheck Protection Program would work. I wanna caution you, the model is based on our best information and has not been validated uh, with actual scenarios, uh, but we believe it's, it's a uh, good guidance for making your decisions. Uh, the way that, and we'll send this calculator out to everyone on this uh, webinar. Uh, the way to use it, it's protected, but the white cells with blue text or blue font would be uh, where you can enter information. And then the cells that are grayed out are formulas that are protected. So I'm going to, uh, share the uh, calculator real quick. And hopefully you can see this. So I have this calculator here and that 157,871 was my total payroll cost for the previous 12 months that I showed you before. 
Now I'll switch back to the um, presentation so you can see, sorry, my sharing is there. So now we understand the, um, or we've entered the amount of payroll costs. The next thing to do is to calculate the uh, maximum forgiveness amount that we anticipate. In order to do that, you take the eight weeks in the future, beginning with the date that you believe you'll get the loan. So you can see I started with 12 April, going through the 31st of May, and I'm estimating my payroll costs at 21,300. I've got my mortgage uh, interest in there, and I've got utilities. So my total forgiveness amount is $27,000. There's also a uh, sort of a penalty on forgiveness. So if you reduce your headcount uh, as a result of the COVID uh, crisis, then that could count against you in calculating your um, forgiveness amount. And so I've got a couple of scenarios here. Uh, last year, we only had 1.7 FTEs, full-time equivalents. Uh, and then um, during the first of the year, the first two months of the year, we have 2.2 of uh, headcount. And then we project uh, two uh, FTEs in the next eight weeks. And you can see here on the bottom, the way to calculate these FTEs is take your total hours in a week, divide by 40, and that gives you a full-time equivalent calculation that's used in the, um, in the Paycheck Protection Program. So going back to the calculator, so we've entered the uh, total payroll costs, 157,000. I failed to point out earlier, but you can see the total maximum loan is 32,890. And they come in for that by taking the monthly average, so take that 157 divided by 12, and then multiply by 2.5, and you get the 32,890. And as when calculating the forgiveness, we have the expected loan origination date of April 10th. Remember, we estimated the forgiveness amount would be $27,000. And then we have a couple of scenarios we can work through on the FTEs, the full-time equivalents. So if you remember, we started with uh, looking at last year in 2019 from February 15th through June 30th, we had 1.7 FTEs and we're anticipating going forward two FTEs. So in this scenario, there's no penalty. However, if I were to use the most recent period of January 1st through the February 20th, I had 2.2. .2. As you can see there, I would get a penalty of 9% of my forgiveness because I reduced my uh, FTEs uh, during the crisis period or in the eight weeks after the loan is originated. So I have the option. I'm going to take the better option for me, which is a 0% reduction. I did get a, or this business did get an idle grant amount of 1250, so that's what we're anticipating. So their total forgiveness amount is 25,820. So out of a $32,000 loan, or nearly 33,000, we have almost $26,000 in forgiveness. So the total loan with forgiveness, we're anticipating to be about $7,000. And you can see with that, those terms, my first payment would be October 9th and $298 a month for that loan. So I'm going to go back to the slides here and uh, turn it over to John. I'm sorry, I do have one, one more. So the conclusions, uh, the relief av available to this business appears to be $1,250 in idle grant, we're estimating. Uh, the PPP loan amount is 32890 
they do have, um, as you recall, they do have uh, monthly payments on a 7A loan. Uh, so the SBA debt relief program, which pays six months of their payments, is $33,000. So the total relief for this business is $67,000. Uh, with that, their obligation on the loan uh, starts at $33,000. You subtract the estimated forgiveness of $26,000, and we now have $7,000 of a loan, uh, the PPP loan, that the owner would have to pay starting on October 20th at $298 a month. With that, I'll turn it over to John. All right, thank you, Jack. And I've got a fairly typical scenario, unfortunately, right now, uh, a business which has experienced a severe drop, a 50% uh, drop in revenue uh, because of the COVID-19 virus. And Jack, if you could advance that. So uh, this example is an auto lube business, very familiar with this, quick lube kind of place, an LLC. They've got eight full-time employees. And for the idle process, and Jack mentioned this, we're really looking at two numbers, all right? We're looking at their gross sales for the 12 months up to the virus. I said 2019, but it's, it's pretty close to that. It's so a 12 months prior to uh, the start date. So $725,000 in sales and drop down a little bit to COGS, which is $280,000. Those are the two numbers that they ask on that idle application. That's very sparse in terms of financial state, uh, financial numbers on there. Uh, I do want you to take a peek just between those two, between the gross sales and the COGS, and look at what's been happening to uh, sales. I mean, last year, 2019, first quarter, they did 180. This quarter, things slowed down, uh, first quarter of, of 2020, down to 100. And second quarter that we're in right now, I mean, who knows? I mean, people are still driving a little bit, uh, still needing oil changes, but maybe 40,000 for the quarter. All right, we're, we're projecting that. So they are definitely seeing an injury. So we're going to use those numbers for a couple of a later scenarios here. They had payroll. Uh, last year, their payroll was $240,000. And we're, we know we're going to use that figure for the Paycheck Protection Program. And if you subtract their COGS of 280 from the gross sales of 725, we are given a gross profit of, of $445,000. And, and we will see, and you will see, that that is the number that the SBA is using as the basis of the idle loan package. They're doing six months or half of that amount. So typically uh, when the loan officer from the SBA calls you and offers you an amount, we're anticipating that it's gonna be six months of gross profit because gross profit pays the bills. So that's gonna be $222,000. In this scenario, they do have an existing SBA loan and, and this is, uh, that's the wonderful news about this because there's six months of payments being made by the SBA, which is amazing. Uh, and so they're looking at a monthly debt service of $2,500. So that'll set us up. That sets up the scenario. Jack, if you could advance. Awesome. Thank you. Um, just like with Stephanie's worker, I mean, this is um, two parents and a, and a child, a child under 16. So in terms of the federal relief check, which should be coming quickly, uh, they're looking at $1,200 per person and $500 for the kids. So they're hoping for $2,900 to be arriving soon just for personal, um, personal expenses. In terms of the idle loan, so they, they filed the application, hopefully in the last week and a half or so when the application has been incredibly streamlined. They uh, hit the button to be considered for the, for the uh, advance up to $10,000. And those two, those two words, Jack cautions us to use uh, every time, up to $10,000. We don't know what that amount's gonna be yet. Uh, we're, we're waiting for some good news for some people. So the SBA pulled the credit, make sure that they had uh, decent credit and it has, you know, it's relaxed, okay? It's not as, as um, stringent as what you would find in most banks. So they pulled the credit and they looked at the gross profit, which was again, $445,000. So the idle total loan, uh, $222,500. And we're anticipating, you know, with eight employees and with a loan of that amount, we are certainly hoping that the, that the SBA uh, preliminary grant advance is at least is the ten thousand dollars, but there's an asterisk there because it remains to be seen. All right, this would certainly be a situation where we would hope so. In terms of the Paycheck Protection Plan, we keep on making that mistake. Paycheck Protection Plan (PPP). Their average labor again last year, their labor was two hundred and forty thousand dollars. So dividing that by twelve brings us to twenty thousand a month. As Jack pointed out, they are basing the PPP on two and a half months. So two and a half months times that typical payroll brings us to 50,000. Right? Um, I'm gonna show you in, in more uh, detail 
they are, as long as this company spends that money on payroll and keeps their people employed, they're going to be forgiving $40,000. Actually, when you get right down to it, I'm going to show you on one of the, on one of the subsequent slides, really forgiving 50 uh, out of the 50, but they've already paid you the 10 in the idle advance. So I want you to understand the SBA does not like to pay for things twice. Okay. Um, and so we've got some tips on that. So uh, yes, they're forgiving 50, but they've already paid you 10. They've already advanced you 10. So they're going to write off the other 40 on that loan if you use it for uh, uh, labor and assuming you got the, you asked for and got the grant. And then the six months paid by the FBA, uh, SBA, and that's if it's an SBA loan. That's a, a traditional 7A loan. That's a micro loan that was done by the SBA. That's a 504 if you bought real estate, uh, if you've increased your, your plan, bought a warehouse or something, okay? So uh, this gentleman's making loan payments of 2,500, so the forgiveness amount is 15,000. Now, <laughs> there's another asterisk. I'm a big asterisk guy. Um, I have run this up as far as I can go locally to the deputy district director um, out, out of Wichita, whom I know. And my question was, okay, if the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program amount, the forgiveness is reduced by the idle advance, the grant, is six months of loan forgiveness going to reduce the PPP? And the answer was no, they're separate programs, okay? But here's the scoop. I've been working with the SBA now for, uh, not for them, but with them uh, for almost 13 years. They do not like to pay twice or three times for the same thing. Keep, please keep fabulous records if, if all this goes. Show that obviously the, the debt forgiveness paid the debt, the PPP paid payroll, the idle paid other bills, okay? Keep everything separate. Some accountants have even said, keep the things in separate accounts. I don't know if you have to go that far, but my God, keep your receipts so that you can prove that uh, the IDLE and the PPP didn't go to cover your debt service. We don't want to be doing double double dipping there. They, they won't like that. Uh, Jack, have you good advance? Awesome, thank you. Uh, this is a, a calculator that we found. Stephanie found this. Uh, just to kind of back things up a little bit, uh, back up our estimates, uh, very simple. It says, great, what were your total payroll costs from January to the, the end of the year? Uh, in our example, it was 240,000. And so the, the uh, web page comes back and says, Conceivably, the PPP could be $50,000. Now, Jack is a big spreadsheet guy. Jack looked at this web page and said, hold my beer, and went in and, and created the spreadsheet that you saw. And so, uh, Jack, why don't you advance, and we'll take a look at yours again. Awesome. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, is that yours? Okay. You're going to drive? That'll work. Okay. So, at the top of this thing, Awesome. All right. Hopefully you are looking at my screen right now, which is that same calculator. Oh, Jack and Stephanie, somebody nod. There we go. Ooh, <laughs> high tech, wave at me. Um, so this is uh, Jack's calculator for the Paycheck Protection Program. So again, uh, top loan of $10 million, 1%. It had been half, but they bumped it up. Um, Nushin bumped up to 1%. 24 months deferred for six. We see right here that same payroll figure for the per previous 12 months, $240,000, all right? And right here, the, the uh, it calculates the two and a half uh, months of payroll at the $50,000. So that's exactly the same as that other spreadsheet was doing. What I want to really convey, because it is very important, is if you spend the Paycheck Protection Program loan on payroll for those eight weeks after the loan is closed, it's gonna be forgiven, okay? Um, and, uh, but if you cut down on the payroll that you have, uh, our guy has eight and say he goes to four, we're going to get double hurt on that thing. All right. And that's what we, and Jack and I, and Stephanie, we went back and forth on this kind of combing over the wording of the law. Cause at first I didn't think it was that bad, but yeah, they, they're, they're lending you less and they're forgiving less of what they lend you when you reduce your payroll. So right now we have fifty thousand dollars in payroll, and that's the estimated forgiveness if he spent if he spends the money on payroll between the forgiveness for the PPP and the idle advance. All right, we have eight. Now let's take a look at this thing because this was some really good work that Jack did. If we go down to twenty five thousand dollars because we're we've gone from eight employees to four, and we show that these numbers at the bottom change significantly. All right, total forgiveness drops down to 7,500 and the loan, the outstanding balance on the loan is 42,000. 
Let me back up and show you the difference there. If we stay to the uh, stay the course, fifty thousand dollars in payroll, keeping all eight through the period. Check it out. It pretty much flips total estimated forgiveness forty five thousand dollars, and there's five grand left over. So there is every reason in the world to keep your employees employed, fully employed during this eight week period. All right, it's, uh, it's very important. You're gonna get, you're essentially gonna get done twice for going down on the number of employees. Jack, I'm gonna stop my sharing for, I think. There you go. And there we are, beautiful. Okay. Um, so again, another look at the forgiveness amount. And this was uh, another, another tab on the, on the spreadsheet. We see uh, the next eight weeks across the top. So we are, we heeded my advice. We're paying everyone, all eight employees are paying $5,000 um, every week. And uh, what we see there uh, is the maximum forgiveness. Now, there are some other expenses in there, okay? They're still paying a um, uh, mortgage or they're still paying for their utility bills. You can, you can spend a small percentage, 25%, of, uh, I think I might've made an error here, 25% of either the entire loan or the labor amount, I think it's the labor amount, uh, toward non-payroll things and still be forgiven, all right? So when we added up all this stuff, the non-payroll is actually 13 grand, 13,170 that Jack's pointing out, but that's 33%. So they're gonna allow 25%, which brings us down to, to, to 10 or, or conceivably 12, five, depending on how you read the law. Um, so they're allowing in, in this scenario, the, the spreadsheet that I have here, 10 grand uh, of non-payroll, 40 grand of payroll. The maximum forgiveness really is 50, okay? But please understand, they lent you 50, they're forgiving 50, but that's including the idle grant that they've already sent you, which we're assuming in this scenario is $10,000. So they lent you 50, they're forgiving it all, but they're writing off 40 now and they're leaving you the other 10, which you're gonna pay with, uh, with the idle advance, all right? They're not gonna double dip. You're not gonna get 60 out of this thing. Uh, Jack, if you can advance, please. Okay, so very similar situation to what uh, Stephanie and Jack outlined. In terms of the free money, the relief, the relief check to the family, $2,900. As an aside, is that a lot of money to feed a family? Absolutely not. As a secondary aside, you know what minimum wage is? 1,200 bucks. So, you know, uh, consider that when you're looking at this thing. Uh, 2,900 is not a lot of cash. The auto advance, $10,000 with an asterisk, and the asterisk is up too. And, and we, it remains to be seen their formula for that. The forgiven portion of the, of the Paycheck Protection Program is $40,000. Remember, they forgave 50, but they're writing off the 40 and they're gonna make you, uh, have you pay the other 10 with the, with the advance, that's an advance on the loan. The SBA debt relief, $15,000, yet another asterisk because I, I wanna see it in law that that's not going to lower the forgiven portion of the Paycheck Protection Program. Right now, we're told it will not. So the total free uh, potential, almost $68,000. The middle column, we're looking ahead. Jack and Stephanie mentioned doing a cash flow analysis for the next six months, and we recommend that. I am hoping, we are all hoping, that we are beyond this thing and well earlier than six months. But let's be realistic and let's plan for six months. So we know full loaded, eight employees, he's got $120,000 in salary. Our, um, our lube shop owner's got 30 grand in rent. He's making $15,000 in debt service. He's got all the bills. He's got advertising, he's got insurance. He's, he's got a lot of uh, utilities in there, 120. He needs $285,000 to get through the next six months, okay? The funds available, the idle grant. Now remember, 222,500, where'd you get that? It's half of gross profit from last year. Gross profit was 445, half of that's 222. So there's 222,500. There's the Paycheck Protection Program, which is going to pay for $50,000, mostly payroll, a little bit of utilities. There's debt relief in there. The total funds available are two eighty seven five. dollars So you got $2,500 in positive cash flow, plus the relief check of $2,900, a little bit north of five grand for six months, which is not a lot. But remember, we're keeping this thing open. Some people are still driving. Some people are still working. Some people are still getting their oil changed. And so this is, this is assuming basically no cash comes in. You got eight people uh, working there. And some of our, some of our more proactive uh, clients um, are doing professional development. They're doing very intensive training. Uh, and that would, be a, that would be an option. So our recommendation in this case, the idle, the 22, uh, 222.5, 
and the Paycheck Protection Plan, the full 50,000. Now I'm gonna have Jack advance a slide and I'm gonna muddy the waters. Oops, sorry, <laughs> so, uh, same thing, just more colorful, sorry. One more slide, Jack. And we've done the spreadsheet, sorry. I changed the order. One more slide. Jack, one more slide, please. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> he loves that spreadsheet. I've lost control. Oh. There we go. Whoop. <laughs> wow. You'll get away. Let me recover here. So I'll do a quick voiceover before the slide comes up because you've got another option. Okay. And the option is the um, employee retention tax credit. Now, this is an if, actually, there's about four ifs. If you feel that you can keep your people employed and that you can pay half of their salary. If you have been impacted, this quarter is 50% or worse than the same quarter last year, okay? If you think that the impact is going to continue and uh, beyond this next three months uh, to the, uh, to the uh, essentially the third and fourth quarter of the year, okay? The government through these fully refundable tax credits will pay for half of your labor, all right? This is conceivably far more net than the Paycheck Protection Program with those ifs, all right? Um, so this is payable uh, on each quarter until the beginning of the year, assuming that the injury continues. The way that they're discussing that is again, this quarter that we're in right now is 50% or worse than the same quarter last year. Uh, the next quarter is no more than 80% of the same quarter last year. Once you cross that 80% threshold, this tax credit's over, okay? But um, it's still conceivably a, a, uh, an option, all right? The reason that we need to bring it up within this discussion, sorry, Jack, I'm going to back you up one or a couple. Need to get back to that red. Yes, thank you. Ooh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. No worries. Am I in the right place? See how much, no, one more. <laughs> See how much he loves that spreadsheet? <laughs> okay. This is incredibly important. All right. That red on the bottom, if you go for the employee retention tax credit, you can't do the PPP. It's one or the other. All right. One or the other in this case. Um, there's a, a link at the bottom to the IRS. They have a pre pretty good frequently uh, asked questions uh, form on this. So, you know, I want you to be talking to your, uh, to your accountants. Um, remember, there are four of us in the office. Fabulous. We're happy to help. Uh, there are well over a thousand accountants in the Kansas City metro area. So uh, in terms of brand bandwidth, you know, uh, work with your accountants and suss out which of these is going to be a better choice for you because it is a choice. It's one or the other. Jack, advance one, please. Um, so here's the scoop on this. Um, so we see across, we've got the eight employees. We're paying most of them under $10,000. And as you look through on, on that quarter one, or the quarter two, it's the first quarter after COVID, um, on, that, on that Q1 post-COVID column, you see uh, down about uh, five employees, six employees. Someone's making 11340 over that quarter. They only go up to 10000 per employee per quarter, okay? So when you look at the total wages down below where it says 59,896, that has been reduced by 1,340 from the true total because they only go up to 10 grand per employee per quarter. If the injury continues throughout the rest of this year, praying that it does not, but um, assume the worst, hope for the best kind of thing, then you're looking at wages of almost $60,000 per quarter and a tax credit of almost $30,000 per quarter. This is a net $90,000 benefit to your business. Uh, compare that to the eight weeks of um, salaries that you're going to get out of the PPP. Eight weeks, this is the rest of the year at half price. But remember those ifs, all right? If it continues, if you're willing to pay for half, um, and um, I lost an if. <laughs> but Jack, I think that's the end of my slides. And my ifs. Oh, oh, I have a backup. Sorry, I added one today. So just to kind of uh, uh, reiterate that choice on the, your, your big choice you have to make, Paycheck Protection Program, eight weeks of labor, um, it's forgiven if you pay by the rules. There's an if. Or the uh, employee retention tax credit, if you can afford to pay 50% of your labor going forward the rest of this quarter, this year, you've been impacted, 
50% uh, or more down quarter to the same quarter last year. The impact's gonna continue, no, no quarter in the future, more than 80% of its, of its um, same quarter last year. This tax credit can pay for half of your labor to the end of the year. And there's my, my reminder that, you know, like I said, we're happy to help, but there's a lot of accountants out there. They're all running numbers on this. Uh, and there's a lot of people in the KC Metro to help you. Okay, Jack, I know that's my last slide, so thank you. All right. So we've been getting a lot of calls about what's going on with the CARES Act, specifically the PPP and the emergency grant. Uh, just to remind everybody, the uh, CARES Act was signed into law on March 27th. That was 11 days ago. Banks started receiving instructions on how to process PPP loans on April 2nd. That was just five days ago, and I'm counting weekends. The national infrastructure was not in place prior to the signing. Uh, so we're hearing a lot of banks are reporting outages of SBA online system. Uh, the infrastructure wasn't in place, so they had to go scramble to put that in place. Uh, as a result, we're seeing not all banks are participating in the PPP program. Some have never worked with the SBA and for whatever reason, they're not participating. Uh, there's an estimate of 30 million small businesses in the country, and that's a $350 billion loan package. So the numbers are huge. Uh, the SBA states that they are processing billions of dollars per hour. And so far they've, according to the news report I read uh, this morning, $38 billion have been approved as of 4-7. So the point is, as hard as it is to be patient, I think a little patience would help you uh, deal with this situation. I'm not saying don't be urgent, don't rush, but understand that everything wasn't in place until the 2nd of April in terms of understand the banks understanding how to process these loans. Uh, the emergency grant, I've not heard of anybody receiving that grant yet, so that's obviously slowed down, uh, but keep persisting with your uh, processing your or calculating your numbers, talk to a bank, but then understand on the back end that there may be some delays in this. I won't go through this in detail, but we do include links to uh, learn more about the different or how to apply for the different programs. Um, and with that, I'll turn it back over to Jessica. Thanks, Jack. We are gonna go ahead and start with our Q and A's. And we have quite a few questions, which is awesome. So keep those coming, keep voting on the questions to push them up to the top. And we're gonna, we are going to, um, we will get to the ones submitted during the webinar in just a moment. We have a handful of questions that were submitted prior to the webinar um, that I'm going to ask of uh, Jack, Stephanie, and John. So um, you three jump in, um, whomever wants to take the question, but we're gonna start off with the first one. Uh, question one, it seems that the rules have changed a few times. I have submitted my PPP removing federal taxes, but keeping state and local taxes. Does this mean that I will still be paying federal payroll taxes, therefore being out of pocket in eight weeks? Just want to understand that. That is indeed our understanding. Um, I'm not sure if it was their intent. Um, but again, the government doesn't like to pay twice for the same thing, and and uh, and that certainly is the uh, the way that we're reading it. The federal taxes uh, paid FICA uh, contributions and such are not part of the um, not part of the equation of the forgiveness amount. I would like to point out that there is the ability to defer those taxes to the end of the year, 50% to the end of the year, and 50% to next the end of next year. So at least you get some relief on the timing of paying those taxes. All right, thank you. Second question, can I use the EIDL along with the PPP and the $10,000 still be used as a grant? Not trying to be greedy, but most of the PPP will be eaten up on payroll, which I understand that is the purpose. But it would be nice to have cash to pay rent and utilities since I am required to be closed. I just want an understanding on that. So I'll take that one. Uh, you can apply for the EIDL loan and then turn around and apply for the PPP. Uh, if you get the EIDL loan before you process the PPP loan, then they will roll it over. 
and you do have the option to roll it over later. Uh, I'm not clear on whether that's going to be a forced rollover, uh, but they do allow both in terms of funding. What they will not allow, as John mentioned earlier, you can't double dip. So you have to be very clear on how you used your idle money versus your PPP money and make sure that you're using them for the approved intent and that you're not using, um, you know, you're not using both, quote unquote, using both funds for the same purpose, same itemized purpose. Thank you. Next question. I read on SBA.gov that 7A SBA loans will be paid for interest and principal for six months. It appears this includes SBA loans that have been in place and not just new ones. My bank doesn't know. Um, I guess I'll take that. I think John actually talked to the um, deputy director of the SBA yesterday and um, or through email and um, actually, it'll be, it's for any existing SBA loan and any new loans, whether it's 7A or 504, between now and September 27th of 2020. So if you are growing and have that opportunity to get a new loan, um, six months of that brand new loan will also be covered. And by the way, if you have already, if you've been proactive and asked for a deferment of your payments on those loans, they will pay the six months, even if it's been deferred. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question, any updates on when businesses will hear anything on these loans or when we'll see the money? Uh, as, as the law states, we're, uh, they were aiming for three days. That hasn't happened. Uh, I think the last word we heard from the SBA uh, for the idle, uh, the full idle loans is now what, four to seven weeks, I think. Four to Jack, seven. Four to seven. Yeah, that was the last guidance. They, as we mentioned, I think in the first uh, webinar about a week ago, they typically do under $10 billion a year. Now they're doing 350 nationwide all at once. They're overwhelmed. Okay, thank you. Next question. Many banks have suspended applications to the PPP program. My bank is among them. I was told this morning that the SBA has put the program, quote, on pause and that they will not accept any more applications. What is the outlook of the PPP program and when can we expect to be able to apply for those loans again? Yeah, unfortunately we don't have, unfortunately we don't have insight into uh, the timing of the loans or what's happening internal to the SBA and treasury and getting you the, the funds. Uh, I just recommend you keep close contact with your banker, keep an eye on the news, and, um, you know, pray for the government to get those loans out. Yeah, I don't believe there's anything on hold. Uh, I think some banks feel that they don't have adequate guidance uh, to start this process, and the application just dropped. Uh, one application of two just dropped late last week, so they're scrambling. Yeah, and the sole proprietors won't um, actually on April 10th is when they're supposed to start submitting, so... Mm. That kind of leads into the next one. Um, secondly, I am a sole proprietor operating as a single member LLC. I am a consultant and the only employee of my company is me. Do I qualify under the PPP program and can I use it to pay my own salary? And that's yes. And, and kind of back to that gig worker scenario or solopreneur scenario that I went through. Um, they're going to use your profit and loss statement and your income is going to be based on that net income of the P&L divided by 12 um, and then times the two and a half. So that's how they'll come up with it, but you can definitely apply for it. Thank you. Next question. I have already applied for the idle loan through the SBA disaster website, uploaded documents directly to them on March 30th. I have heard nothing, not even an acknowledgement that, that they received it. Is this the backlog or are they just not doing it yet? Um, so when you apply, did you, you probably got an, a confirmation when you submitted it. And I believe that's, that's the only thing I've heard of, unless you guys have, um, that, that they've received it, is it, and they're not gonna send you a confirmation, they give you that case number. Um, the only other thing I've heard of is when people applied prior to last Sunday, when they had dropped the, the change the application to include the 10, up to $10,000. Um, people did get an email from the SBA that said you'd previously applied for the idle and are now um, able to apply 
apply for the t up to ten thousand dollars. So um, that's the only outbound communication um, from the SBA that we've heard of. Thank you. A couple more questions. Is it better to do the Paycheck Protection Program even though I'm a one-man business? Uh, well, as a one-person business, you are eligible for the Paycheck Protection Program. I think you just need to run the numbers uh, to see if it's to your advantage. Uh, but, you know, it all's based on your case, but uh, I would definitely encourage you to run the numbers and uh, you can use the calculator that we send out. Um, and as Stephanie mentioned, your net earnings is, or your net profit is what you would use as your payroll costs. Thank you. Next question. My question is, what is the long-term consequences of not being able to pay back a PPP or idle loan for a business owner? We are looking at many options for our restaurant and bar, but are concerned with adding even more debt if the business does not make it through the current crisis. Is the loan tied to the business entity or the business owner for credit reporting and repayment? What if the business survives, but barely, and is not able to generate the extra amount needed to pay back one of these loans in the time allotted? Yeah, the paycheck, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in, but only partially. The Paycheck Protection Program, uh, we, we, we double checked today, that doesn't, doesn't have a personal guarantee on that. Uh, that's not backed by any assets. So you're pretty safe with that one. It's, you know, spend it on, on payroll and it'll be forgiven. My concern is the idle, the economic injury disaster loan, because um, look, a, an amount that is lost on these, if you cannot pay that back, is referred to Treasury. It's the same thing as if you don't pay your taxes. I mean, Treasury doesn't pay, uh, doesn't play. So um, uh, that is more concerning, I mean, and, and that's a situation you are you are taking a 30-year note. It's amortized, it's amortized out, but this is the conversation I have with a client today. It ain't taking the pain away. It's spreading it out over 30 years so that you feel it less. And, and so, yeah, you're going to want to run the numbers on that. Thank you. Last question for the pre-submitted questions. Um, my question is whether the PPP loan proceeds may be used to pay distributions to an owner of a company who isn't a W-2 employee or a 1099 contractor. Those distributions are the only compensation the owner receives from the company. I think that's back to Stephanie's uh, Stephanie's scenario, basically. I mean, they're, they're, the net income basically is the income for a company like that. They're not a W-2 employee because it doesn't sound like they're a corporation or paid by a corporation. They're not 1099. It's based on income. All right. Thank you. Okay. We're going to shift gears over to, and I just realized we are four minutes past the, um, the, the regularly scheduled webinar. We are going to stay on here for another 30 minutes. Um, we will answer as many questions as we can in those 30 minutes. Um, so please feel free to stick around and join us. Um, copies of these, uh, the questions and answers will be provided um, at the end. Understand that um, you all have busy schedules if you need to jump off here. But we're going to start with uh, uh, the question that has is the most popular right now. And question is, if I'm a sole proprietor and don't pay myself a salary, can I still take advantage of the PPP? John. Yeah, and, and we, we covered that, but it bears repeating. Uh, one thing I do want to reiterate, and this was a very recent change, the calculation for the PPP prior to last Thursday included payments to independent contractors. Now it does not. They, they expect those independent contractors because of their, their own business to do their own PPP. But, uh, but absolutely, sole proprietor, um, it's based on income. It was exactly what Stephanie's scenario was. Next question, is there a way to check the status of your EIDL loan and how long should we expect to wait to hear an answer on the acceptance amount? Jack. So as we mentioned earlier, uh, we're hearing now that it's a four to seven week estimated wait time for funding of the EIDL loan. Uh, that's the best we know at this point. All right, thank you. Next question, I've heard from a couple of businesses that applied last week and they haven't received their advance payment yet. I thought these were to be deposited within three business days. S Stephanie. Um, so I think we mentioned it earlier that um, we have not heard of anybody that has received any of the deposits yet, even though they said the three business days. 
there's some terminology that talks about when it's been accepted, when it's been processed, and, um, and looking at some things online, people are saying now that it might be seven to 10 days. So there, it's very unclear. And on the SBA um, regional director yesterday had no input as to when those um, grant funds would be released. All right, thank you. Next question. It's not a question, but we appreciate uh, this statement. This is the best webinar I've seen on this. Thank you. Well, we appreciate and glad that you were able to join us. Glad to bring this information to you. Yeah, I wanted to answer that one, Stephanie. That was, I'm that was, sorry, that was John. the best one on the entire list. I put my hand up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Next question. My wife and I are both self-employed under a type S core. I am 50% owner in her business. We have applied for both the IDLE and the PPP for her business. Can I apply for the same grants for my business? Jack. Uh, as we understand it, each business stands alone. So if you have two businesses, then two businesses can apply for these uh, relief uh, funds. Next question, I'm self-employed and started the business um, in September of 2019. What if you have not taken a paycheck from the business yet? John. Okay, so we're talking about two different things. Uh, a brand new business can still apply for the IDLE, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Uh, a business which has not been in business for a year, they're gonna be looking at on a case-by-case -case basis, okay? So uh, you're gonna get a call from a nice SBA loan officer to discuss that. I would, I would have your P&L uh, for last year, P&L to this date. Um, and then on the Paycheck Protection Program, there's a couple of different ways to do that. You don't have to reach back all oh, last year. You can look at, oh, what is it, Jack? Just, uh, it's like January to March. Uh, you can base uh, the payroll on that if you need to, isn't it? Yeah, I believe so. And, and another question in there about the earnings. So you don't get a paycheck as a sole proprietor, but your earnings, your net earnings is what you can use as your payroll cost. Great. Next question. Do we know what are the qualified utilities? Does that include uh, voice over IP, internet, or is it strictly electric, gas, water, sewer? Jack. There's no specific call out in the law or anything that I've seen. I don't know if anybody else has seen anything that clarifies. Uh, my interpretation of utilities is uh, includes your uh, internet. Mm -hmm. I don't know about VO, uh, VoIP, VoIP, uh, voice over IP. Uh, yeah, that would be telephone costs. So telephone, internet, gas, electric, water, sewer, those are things that I'm assuming are, are uh, qualified utilities. Thank you. The idle grant is up to $10,000. Is there any guidance on how the up to will be applied? John. Um. No, and the only thing we have seen uh, was a screenshot from some training from our colleagues in West Virginia, where the application reminded applicants that the amount would be based on the number of employees. And that was the first time we had seen that. And so we're a little concerned that a solopreneur uh, with very uh, little in, uh, by way of, say, uh, gross profits, because again, they're basing things on half of gross profits, uh, and no employees would see the whole amount. But that's that is speculation and inference on our part until we actually see some guidance or see some amounts. Thank you. Next question, based on your example, are you saying you're advising small businesses to roll the idle grant into the PPP? Couldn't, in that example, the hairdresser have taken the full PPP of $8,125 and the grant of $6,000? Stephanie. So it's not that we're advising the small businesses to do that. It's that's how the SBA, when you submit your paperwork for forgiveness of that eight week period of the PPP, will allocate your forgiveness. They're going to take into account what you've already been given as part of the idle grant. So um, it's, it's just the way they've instructed us and what we've read is how that those two numbers will work together. Um, to um, cover the whole PPP, which is the 8,125. Thank you. Next question. What expenses can we use the IDLE grant for? Jack? Yeah, so it's pretty wide open. <clears throat> Sick leave, payroll cost, <clears throat> excuse me, increased cost to obtain materials unavailable from applicants' original source due to interrupted supply chains. 
rent or mortgage payments, and uh, pretty wide open statement, obligations that cannot be, be met due to revenue loss. So pretty much any obligations you have that you can't meet or your material cost increases or your payroll. So it's pretty wide uh, allowance there. Thank you. Next question. If you have frozen your credit reports with the three agencies, will the SBA be able to pull your credit score without your permission? Ooh, I don't know. John. John, you are muted. Wow, Jessica, you've been trying to do that for months. Um, <laughs> From early guidance, and I remember this from Will's, uh, uh, Will Katz out of our KU office, um, they're not necessarily looking at your personal credit, they're looking at your, uh, your small business credit score. Uh, that number was what, uh, 130 or so. Um, and, uh, and so it might not affect, it depends on if, if you froze your business's credit score, which I don't think you could do. So uh, it sounds to me like uh, you're frozen your personal, but they're very likely taking a look at your business score. Your business is applying. Thank you. Next question. For the idle, what determines the amount of the grant? Is that directly tied to the number of employees? Jack. So as John mentioned, uh, we don't know what the calculations are for the idle grant. Uh, there is some inference we've made from information we've seen that it is tied to the number of employees, but the real answer is we don't know. All right, thank you. Has there been any update on when the $10,000 emergency grant will start being paid? So, uh, Jack? Yeah, uh, we mentioned earlier, uh, we don't have any visibility on that. We've not heard of anybody receiving that grant yet. If you have, we'd love, love to hear about it so we can get some idea of, of what that delay will be. And remember the two magic words, up to. $10,000. Thank you. What would be best practice for tracking how monies are spent? Jack. I would recommend looking at the uh, requirements for how to use the money and make sure if you're using uh, an accounting system like QuickBooks, which is the most popular, to itemize, to create items or accounts that will itemize those expenses in the various categories that they're allowing. That way, when it comes time to, to reckoning, when you have to prove what you've done, you've got a very clear automated process for tracking that information. Great, thank you. Next question, if I already laid staff off, can I rehire them to fix this? John. Yeah, and the PPP is retroactive, I believe, till February 15th. If you laid somebody off, you know, say the end of February or so, you can absolutely use this money. The intention is to get them back working. That's going to pay for eight weeks of payroll. Um, you have until the end of June. Great, thank you. Uh, next question, will you share Jack's Excel calculator via email or downloadable document? I like it and thanks. Yes, Karen, this will be um, provided with the uh, recording as well as the slides for today's presentation. Next question, what happens if I'm a Schedule C due to 100% bonus depreciation being allowed? My Schedule C shows a net loss. That is a tongue twister. Does that mean my business is not allowed to apply for the PPP since 2.5 times zero equals zero? Jack. I can't answer your question specifically, but I will say that in the CARES Act, there were several items uh, in the details about modifying accounting practices. And so what I would recommend is uh, consult your accountant, CPA, and find out what they know um, to get your answer. Thank you. Next question, does this also apply to Missouri businesses in the same way? John? Yeah, these are, these are federal programs. Uh, I, I can't think of any difference. All states are included in the EIDL. Uh, everyone's included in the Paycheck Protection Program. Great. Next question. When will the state of Kansas change the law so that independent contractors like myself be approved and implemented? Why is Kansas dragging their feet? Stephanie? 
Stephanie, you are muted. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so we're not so certain that Kansas is the only one, drag, quote, dragging their feet because um, I have some clients in Missouri and some other, and talk to other family members that are in Wisconsin and nobody has been approved that I've heard of that are sole proprietors or independent people. Um, I know we're monitoring the situation and um, we do have contacts and I know um, as soon as we hear anything, I've got a list and I know all of us are keeping lists of people that we work with and, um, and their specific scenarios. So as we find out more information, we will definitely be sharing that. Great, thank you. Um, next question. I'm a new business that opened in January of 2020. It's a quilt shop and I was doing well until three weeks ago. I don't have a quarter in 2019 to base my profits off. Do, a, do I qualify for anything grant wise? I don't have employees and I don't get a check. My part-time job ended last week due to the virus. John. Yeah, they're going to apply for the idol, uh, hit the box for I'd like to be uh, considered for the advance. Uh, what you don't have is uh, enough information really to answer that gross, um, that sales or gross profit number, but you will be contacted by an SBA loan officer on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, that's what they're doing with very, very new businesses that don't have any, anything to, uh, to show. Uh, again, document what you can, get a P&L uh, from, uh, you know, year to date uh, kind of thing would help. Great. Thank you. Why are all the banks on the portal yet to process the PPP loans? Jack. So we're hearing that the portal has problems, technical problems, and they acknowledge that not all banks are listed there. Uh, what we recommend is you start with the bank you have a relationship with. Some banks, a lot of banks are not processing loans unless you are a, um, a uh, customer of that bank previously. Uh, so start with the bank that you work with. If they're not participating, then you should just start. I would start with SBA lenders and then go to other banks in your uh, locale that work with small businesses, which had a better answer. Thank you. Next question. I second Marla's question. I also, I applied last Monday and haven't heard or received anything. Also, although we wouldn't have to repay the grant, will it be taxed? Jack. Uh, that's something that you should probably double check with your accountant, but my interpretation of it is that it is a, a cash advance of your loan and then forgiven. So in that scenario, I don't believe you would pay ta income tax on that, but double check with your accountant. Thank you. Next question. When will the state of Kansas change? I believe we've already answered that question. Yeah. Stephanie, can you click done on that question, please? Uh, next question. What if you never applied for a credit card and you don't have a credit score? Would you still be qualified for the grant? Jack. Well, I don't know the answer, but um, that's, that's something that you probably just need to uh, do the uh, do the application and then see if you can get the get the uh, grant. My understanding is the the grant is going to be released rather quickly in the processing steps, and I'm under the impression they're not really checking a lot of data to give that grant out. But don't quote me on that. I would um, uh, that's the best answer I have. And, and remember also, sorry to chime in, but if you're denied the loan, you still don't have to pay the, the, the advance back, the grant back. Good point. So go for it. Good. Next question. Does the idle grant apply to nonprofits? John. Yeah, as, as our understanding, as a matter of fact, the idle program gives a better interest rate on that 30 year loan. I think you pay a percent less than, than uh, for profit businesses do. They're open to, uh, we're, we're run to the SBA, so what most of our stuff is for-profit businesses, but that's my understanding. Thank you. Next question. Can an individual with a rental reported on Schedule E of the 1040 get assistance? John? 
I'm not sure about the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, I do remember from the application for the idle that there was a box that talked about uh, how much did you lose due to lost rents. Uh, and so in terms of the idle, all indications are, are yes, absolutely. Thank you. Next question. Once the SBA approves your PPP loan, is there an estimation on time frame to receive those funds? Jack? The, uh, I'm sorry, which question was that? So the question is, once the SBA approves your PPP loan, is there an estimation on time frame of when to, you will receive those funds? Okay, uh, sorry about that. We don't know at this point what the time frame is. Um, we, it's going to be uh, something that we all learn in the next few days as the SBA and the banks kind of get the process working. And Jack, I, I'd like to point out on that question, the SBA is not approving the PPP loans. Those are going to be approved through your bank and they're SBA backed. Yeah, good point. Right. And the only other thing I would add to that is the, um, you know, June 30th is the cutoff and it's an eight week. They're forgiving the, um, the salary for the pay for eight weeks. So uh, they do, the SBA recommends that not only apply as quickly as you can, but then hopefully they'll, the, they'll be able to process your loan as fast as they can. So you can take advantage of the whole eight weeks. Thank you. Next question. If you bring back someone that was furloughed, how does that impact your forgiveness amount? Jack? So your forgiveness amount is based on the next eight weeks from the point in time that you expect to get that loan. So I would just bring those employees back as quickly as possible. If for some reason there's a delay, and let's say two weeks into that eight week period, you bring them in, then they only, you only get credit for six weeks of pay for that individual. So bring them back in uh, before that eight week period starts and you'll get forgiveness for their, their salary will be included in your forgiveness calculations. Great. Next question, can benefits be included in the PPP calculation for payroll cost? I noticed they were not included in the example. Jack. Uh, yes, actually, uh, in the PPP calculation for payroll costs, it includes salary, wages, commissions, tips, vacation, mm -hmm. parental, family, medical, or sick leave, severance pay, health care benefits, retirement benefits, or state or local tax on employee compensation. Great, thank you. Next question. I am self-employed but operate as an S-Corp. Can I apply for the idle emergency grant under the self-employed sole proprietor? Jack? I think we'll just have to do some research. Uh, as Jessica mentioned earlier, we will send out a list of all these questions with our answers typed in. Thank you. Next question. Is the payroll only gross wages, not all the other benefits such as health insurance, retirement benefits and insurance? Jack? Yeah, I think that's similar to the question a couple of questions ago. Uh, so there are, uh, you can include benefits such as health insurance, retirement benefits. Uh, I'm not sure about insurance. That's not itemized as one of the options. Next question, how do you find a bank to apply for a PPP loan? I'll go ahead and take that one. Um, there is on the SBA.gov website, they have a uh, coronavirus disaster uh, portal where they have financing options. And in the financing options, there will be a section for the PPP program. If you click on the PPP program, they will have a link for all um, SBA banks, uh, approved banks that are, are participating as of current. Next question. If we applied for the IDL on the old system before they shut it down for an upgrade, then resubmitted due to the request of us to do so, they said to list the old case number with the new submission, but of course they didn't have a field to do so. I have submitted twice now and have no verification if they 
have all they need to move forward. Are you getting any information in regards to the lack of communication in this process? Everyone is telling us what to do. We do it and then nothing. Is there a reason they can't send out a notice saying we have your information and you are in the queue? John. I mean, no good reason. I mean, the reason is, again, they're used to doing six to under $10 billion a, a year regionally, and now they're doing 350 all at once. They're, they're frankly just overwhelmed. Um, it, and, uh, you know, they went through, my God, they went through, this is the third different portal that we've seen in about a week and a half. Um, so um, no good reason, just uh, over demand. Thank you. Next question. If a business gets an idle grant of 5,000, are you advising they do not take the maximum PPP loan, but take the maximum minus the grant, so 100% is forgivable if used correctly? Jack. So the way the rule is written, the forgiveness amount for the idle, or for the PPP, will be reduced by the amount of the idle grant. So, you know, any amount that you have forgiven will be deducted from that um, that forgiveness amount that you calculate. I hope that answered that question. Thank you. Next question. Our employees are independent contractors paid monthly. I assume we should continue to pay them monthly from the PPP. If an employee or contractor leaves by choice during the PPP period, we would have to retain the balance since it will not be forgiven. We cannot force an employee to stay. John. Well, uh, the second half doesn't matter because the first half um, was changed last Thursday when the SBA uh, presented their, their final interim ruling on this uh, and that uh, independent contractors, 1099 employees, their, um, their compensation is not included in the calculation for the PPP amount only W-2 employees, uh, independent contractors are out of that. So frankly, you're not gonna get loaned uh, the money to pay them. The intention of the SBA at this point, as far as we read it, is that those people are self-employed on their own, in their own businesses, and they would do their own PPP uh, filing with their own banks. Yep. Thank you. We have about two minutes left, so we'll take the next two questions and then we'll close. So the next question, I haven't done 2019 taxes yet. Do I use 2018 numbers? Jack. It's my understanding that they're, the tax return, I'm, I'm assuming we're talking about the PPP loan, tax returns are not part of the input. Uh, what they're looking for is uh, financial information. There's spreadsheets that most banks are using to uh, allow you to enter the information and then they make the decision based on them, those numbers. So you do have to use the most recent 12 months of payroll costs to uh, estimate the amount of the loan. Great, thank you. Last question. As of yesterday, the SBA posted Idle was paying $1,000 per employee, not $10,000. This came out late yesterday. Um, I don't think there's a question rather than a, a statement. I have not, I personally have not seen anything. Um, Jack, Stephanie, or John, have you seen anything to that effect? No, no guidance from the SBA. No, no but it, if you would um, like to send us uh, that, a link to that uh, posting, we'd love to see it because we haven't seen that. Absolutely. Okay. And so we are at 1130 and uh, thank you all so very much for sticking around for the live uh, Q&A session. We got to as many as we possibly could. Uh, the remaining questions that are left in the Q&A box, we will answer um, and they will be provided with the, along with the recording, the slides and the COVID calculator uh, spreadsheet that uh, was put together. We'll send those all out uh, via email and they will also be posted on our state resource uh, page as well. So thank you all for joining us and have a wonderful day. Yeah. Stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye.